Namaste. So, you'll notice I haven't posted any videos for over a month. That's very unusual. But it always means something when that happens. It means I'm investigating a new level of realization and collecting my thoughts about it. And then in the future, I will come up with another series. So that's what's going on. But meanwhile, as always happens in this crazy perverted world, when I withdraw from posting videos regularly, what happens? People start writing me. Oh, teacher, can you be my guru? Can you solve all my problems? <laughs> can you help me figure out what's wrong with my cat? <laughs> no. And the reason why no is because you're approaching me all wrong. Huh? If you walk up to somebody on the street and just start asking them, hey, uh, fix my life, uh, help me understand God, uh, you know, help me attain self-realization, he's going to look at you like a nut. Huh? You're lucky if he doesn't slap you. But people think they can approach a spiritual authority and basically demand hours and hours of free services and offer nothing in return whatsoever, not even the respect that a guru deserves. Now, I don't actually think of myself as a guru or even a teacher. But if you want to play that game, okay, I can play that game. But what does it mean to be a disciple? What does it mean to be a student even? First of all, you approach the teacher with respect. Huh? You offer your obeisances, pranams, respect. You give them some honorific title, master, teacher, uh, baba, or something that indicates respect. And then you offer service. You offer something valuable to the teacher. Now, what do I consider valuable? Why don't you ask me? But nobody even wants to offer... Uh, a question like that. They just want me to solve all their problems, spend hours with them on the phone or on Skype or chatting on Messenger or whatever. Do I have time to do that? No. I have my own life to live. If you want me to help you, I can. I'm very, very capable of helping you. But you have to offer something in return. And it's up to you to make that offering first. Before you burden me with all your questions and your problems. Huh? You know, in the Vedic system, this is called Upanishad. Upanishad. Come close, sit down, make an offering. And listen. But people don't want to make an offering. They don't want to offer any respect even. And they want to spend, want me to spend hours of my time listening to them. What they think, what their problems are, what their issues are, and so on and so forth. Well, of course, there's a, a time and place for it, a dialogue. And it must be, because each student, each disciple, has a unique problem, a unique illness, a unique psychological aberration, which causes them to uh, suffer. So to get rid of that suffering requires an individualized treatment, 
Not that one medicine works for everybody. Huh? If you went to a doctor and he says, oh, yeah, great, take this medicine. And then the next guy comes in and says, gives some completely other different symptoms. And the doctor says, oh, yeah, just take the same medicine. What are you going to think of that doctor? So there are so many teachers who are just offering the same thing for everybody. Huh? This is the ultimate truth. Maybe from some point of view, or maybe in some respect it is. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be helpful for this individual. So a real teacher, a real guru, will give the general theory or the general uh, yeah, philosophy of how the cure is done. Then engage in dialogue with the student until he finds out what the particulars are. Then give a specialized or individualized treatment. And then the disciple has to perform that series of operations, whatever it is, services or meditations or whatever. And then they have to come back and again give the results for confirmation. So there's this feedback loop between the teacher and the student, between the guru and the disciple. It's not a one-way street. It's not that you just come and say, okay, here I am, solve my problem. <laughs> it's not going to work like that. You know, I could maybe sustain one or two relationships like that. And that would just be out of the goodness of my heart. Well, what about all these 300 and some odd videos that I made out of the goodness of my heart? Have you watched all of them? Because what I see again and again is that people ask questions that are already answered in the videos. If they had really watched the videos, if they had really understood the videos, they would already have the answers to those questions. And if they were willing to do the work, they would already have the result. But people are lazy. I'll tell you how lazy they are. On my profile, a YouTube channel, there is an about page. And on that page is the email address for the YouTube channel. And then here and there, in a couple of videos, somebody asked for my personal email address and I gave them a different address. Okay? Just to see what happens, right? So, <laughs> Inevitably, when people write me, they don't write me from the channel email address. They write to the personal email address. And that tells me something. They're lazy. They didn't go to the profile page. They didn't go to the About tab. They didn't look in the right place where you would expect to find the email address. Instead, they picked it up from some comment or other where I was foolish enough to share with somebody, another person who wants to waste hours and hours of my time for no compensation. And they take that address and write me there because they're too lazy to do the research. See, if you're having trouble understanding what's in the videos, there is a series of videos called Matrix Learning that addresses that problem. It's one of the first series that I made. So what it means is that you are so lazy, you haven't even gone to the profile page and looked at the playlists and found out what series there are. So you can, you know, see what's actually available on the channel. You're just like impulsively going through some videos or other and you just happen to see my email address in the comments and so hey what the heck I'll write him and ask him to give up hours of his time just to help me no 
I'm not available for that. If you want to play the guru-disciple game, huh, which, I mean, I don't consider myself a guru. I consider myself to be unlimited, eternal, unconditioned awareness. So there's no question of guru or this or that. Huh? But okay, if you want to play the guru-disciple game, Huh? If you want to pretend that you're not realized, well, that's okay. We can play that game, but then you have to play by the rules of that game. Upa Anishad. Approach, offer service, sit down, and listen. Instead, people want me to listen to them. All their nonsense, all their problems, all their misunderstandings, all their lies, their self-deceptions, their phoniness, their bullshit. And I'm not here for that. I don't have time for that. If you want me to act as your guru or your teacher, you have to make it worth my time. It's just practical. I'm here all by myself. Uh, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I do my sadhana like you should be doing. And I go for a long walk and I cook my breakfast and then I do my chores and then I have cook my lunch. Uh, and then I take some rest, you know. And this is my day. My day is already full. So if you want me to take time for you, you have to make it possible by taking some of the load off of me so that I have the time and energy, the headspace for you, you know? This human body has limited intelligence, limited energy, limited time. So I'm trying to get myself in good enough shape that when I leave this body, which could happen any time at my age, that I attain the desired destination. So that means I have my own stuff to take care of. Thank you very much. And I don't have, a, this is not a, a charity, you know. I, I can't do it. I just can't, uh, it's humanly possible. All right. So I wish you all the best. I hope you attain enlightenment soon. I mean, if you really think that you're not enlightened, <laughs> I'd be happy to help you with that. But Jen, you've got to help me too. That's the only way it can work. So think about it before you write. Go watch the other videos that you haven't seen. And if there's any confusion, go watch the Matrix Learning series so that you know how to clear up your misunderstandings. Do the practices that are recommended in the videos. Then you can write with some offering of service and respect. And I might be inclined to engage with you. That's the way it is, and that's the way it's got to be. So, all the best to you. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.